Hey guys, this video today is going to be a little bit out of the ordinary, but if you choose to watch the whole thing, I think it's going to have massive benefits on your life. What I'm going to do in this video is go through a whole bunch of different things that I see holding people back in their lives. These are things that are holding people back from being free, from being fulfilled, from being happy, and ultimately having the lives that they truly desire to have. And so if you can start to recognize these things in your life, that's when you can start to change them. When you recognize the obstacles that are in front of you, that's when you can really start to deal with them effectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a whole bunch of different obstacles that are holding people back so that you can figure out which ones are holding you back and then you can start to address them. Now this video is probably going to be a little bit longer than my normal videos are. So whether or not it's worth a few minutes of your time to diagnose all the things that are holding you back in your life so you can begin to fix them, well that's up to you. Now, as we're going through this list, I would highly recommend, if you can, that you pull out a pen and paper and you make a note of every one of these that applies to you, because it's going to be very useful to you in the future. So let's jump into it. And these are in no particular order, so there's no order of importance or anything like that. It's just the way that they happen to come to my mind. Now, the first one is addictions. If you are addicted to something, chances are that takes up your time, it takes up your money, and it probably harms your focus. I remember I played in a band a long time ago where we practiced a lot. We put in a lot of time practicing, but all of the other guys in the band smoked and they smoked constantly. And so what ended up happening was that we would practice for 20 or 30 minutes, we would start getting into the flow, and as soon as we started to get a little bit productive, then all of a sudden we had to stop and take a smoke break. And so and that was the the entire pattern of all of our band practices. So we had a really hard time really getting anything done. Even though we were putting a lot of time into it, we were getting very, very little in the way of results. Because uh, the addiction that some of the guys had to face removed their attention every 20 or 30 minutes. And, and it's very difficult to get something done that requires a deep flow state if you have to stop every 20 or 30 minutes because of an addiction. And so if you have any addictions, and that may be addiction to cigarettes or to alcohol or to drugs or to checking your Facebook or to sugar or caffeine, anything like that, chances are it is in some way negatively affecting your results in life. Okay, the next one is poor health. And with poor health often comes addiction to pharmaceutical drugs and dependence on the medical system. If you have chronic health problems and if you have to take a medication every month. If you have to go to the doctor constantly, that drains your bank account and it drains your, drains your time and it probably drains your energy as well. So that's going to affect you on all sorts of different fronts. Now, you might think that that's something that you can't control and in some cases that's true, but I would, I would submit to you that in the vast majority of cases, uh, your health is mostly under your control. And if you're willing to put aside your preconceived beliefs on that for a bit and actually really look into that and really research it, what you might find is even the things that most people think are genetic or hereditary or just caused by a germ or you don't have any control over it, you actually do have a ton of control over it, but have been misled by a medical system that profits off of selling you drugs and uh, selling you treatments that may not be in your best interest at all. Next one is debt. If you are in debt, then you have to pay off that debt, right? You probably you have to pay a monthly payment on that debt. So that could be credit card debt, could be student loan debt, it could be a mortgage, it could be a car payment. The more debt you take on, the more you have to pay in payments and the less free you are. The, the more debt you have to pay, then the more money you have to make which limits your options. So if you wanna be able to quit your job to start a business, for example, it's gonna be a lot more difficult if you bought that fancy house and that fancy car on credit. And if you bought all that stuff on your credit cards and now you have to pay a monthly payment and you have to have that salary, right? The more, the more you can uh, tolerate living on less, the more likely you are to be successful because the more risk you're able to take. Next is distractions. At any moment in time, we have a million things that are trying to get our attention and most of them are not gonna do us any good. You probably know people who spend their entire free time uh, watching football or playing video games or binging on Netflix or, or scrolling through Facebook or Instagram. There's so many worthless 
uh, things that, that want our time, that will just eat up hours and hours and hours of our time, and our time is our most precious resource. So if we get distracted by all of this entertainment, then we are just throwing time down the toilet that we could have been using for something productive. Next thing is lack of attention span. Again, we are living in a world where everything is fighting for our attention at every moment, uh, and so we, we live in an environment that is very bad for our attention span. We have uh, our phones that are constantly giving us notifications from 50 different apps, and our computers are starting to do the same thing, and a lot of people are addicted to Facebook and Instagram, where you are in Twitter, where you scroll through, you read something for half a second, then you look at something else, read that for half a second, look at something else, read that for half a second. If you go scroll on a web page, chances are there's a, a page in the middle that you're reading, and then there's a gazillion little things to distract you all over the sides, all sorts of ads and sidebars and stuff. So basically all of that stuff is programming us to have a very short attention span. If you get accustomed to reading one thing for three seconds and then scrolling down and reading another thing for three seconds and then scrolling down and reading another thing for three seconds, then it's going to be very difficult to do anything that requires some kind of focus. And most things in life that are going to yield you a, a substantial result require deep focus. And so if you can't do that, then you're going to have a very hard time. And by the way, before I continue here, I just want to let you know that I'm not trying to discourage you. You know, I'm throwing a lot of negatives at you here. I understand that. But the, the idea here is to figure out which ones apply to you so that you can systematically go through them and fix them. Look, we live in a society that is absolutely does everything that it possibly can to de destroy our ability to have happy and successful and free lives. Th these things, you might have noticed some of these things or most of these things are by design. The way to break out of it is to recognize the problems and then fix them one by one. And obviously this isn't going to be something that you're going to do overnight. Chances are you're going to check a lot of these things on the list that I'm reading here. Uh, and you're not just going to be able to snap your fingers and they're all going to go away. This is going to require some effort. But recognizing the problems is the first step to fixing them. Okay, next one is low self-image. If you think little of yourself, if you have low expectations for yourself, if you think that you're stupid or that you're annoying or that nobody's going to like you, uh, those, those beliefs about yourself are going to hold you back enormously because well, why are you going to try to do something difficult if you're stupid or you're weak? Or why are you going to try to uh, make connections with people if people don't like you, right? If you have that low self-image of yourself, then that's going to hold you back with just about everything that you try to do. Next is a narrow view of reality where you only understand the physical. You think of everything in terms of the, the physical and you ignore the spiritual. If you get stuck in that trap, and again, society is constantly trying to push you into that trap where everything is physical, if you fall for that, if you believe that, whether consciously or subconsciously, by the way, a lot of these beliefs are subconscious. So the, even though you might not believe them consciously, you still act as if you believe them. So if, if you manage to fall for that programming that the physical is all there is and the spiritual doesn't exist, it's going to massively limit your potential because you are only seeing a tiny sliver of reality and your mind is closed to the, the whole picture of reality, which is a whole lot bigger. And you're almost definitely going to live your life absolutely paralyzed by fear because if this life is all there is and this life is pretty fragile, then your existence might end at any moment. So you've got to break out of that. And there's so much evidence to the contrary, uh, but we're still kind of force-fed propaganda saying that the physical is all there is because that gets us it's locked into that little physical box where we are fearful and where we're easily manipulated and where we're completely out of touch with our true power. Now, next one is dependence on a job. If you are dependent on your job, if you are afraid to lose your job, if you are unable to quit your job, uh, then for one thing, that's going to tie up a whole lot of your time. And for another thing, it might make you afraid to speak out. We live in a culture nowadays where if you speak the truth to the best of your ability, uh, then that truth, if it happens to be politically incorrect, could get you booted from your job. 
So the more you are dependent on a job, the less free you are. And you know, the job might mean, if it's not a remote job, it means that you can't travel anywhere, right? Because you have to keep on coming into the office. It probably means that you have to be in a certain place on a certain schedule that is not of your choosing. It may be that it's a negative environment with negative people and negative energy that's constantly surrounding you so that when you're finished working every day, you have no energy left. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things where a job can really get you down. And if you were unable to get rid of that job, if you feel that, that you were unable to get rid of that job, that could be a very, very big problem for you. Next is dependence on welfare or dependence on some kind of government programs. Same thing as dependence on the job. If you are dependent on somebody else to pay your bills, whether that's your employer or your government or your mother or anyone else, then you have to abide by that person's rules. You don't have freedom. You have to do what they say or else they can, they can take back the money. They don't have to pay you anymore. So the, if you are dependent on the government, it's just as bad or probably worse than being dependent on your job. Next is anxiety or fear. A ton of people have this problem nowadays that they're constantly afraid. They're constantly wondering, what if this doesn't work? They're catastrophizing. They're thinking of worst case scenarios. They're and usually not realistic worst case scenarios. They're, they're just, they have this feeling of doom and gloom all the time. And then if they step just a tiny little bit out of the ordinary, out of the prescribed path for them of, you know, go to college and get a job and work 40 hours a week for somebody else until you are almost dead and then you can retire. People are absolutely scared to death to deviate from that at all. And probably they have a, a fair degree of anxiety even when they don't deviate from it. And you cannot create from a place of anxiety and you, you cannot make your life any better if you were afraid to change anything. And so if you have that anxiety, that's gonna be a huge problem as well. Another big issue for a lot of people is indecisiveness. A lot of people, well, all of us really are, are constantly have endless opportunities for success, endless opportunities to make our lives better. And so a lot of people get this shiny object syndrome where they say, oh, that looks good, I'll try that. And then for like two hours, they, they try to do one thing and then they see something completely different and they're like, oh, that looks good, I'll try that. And they cannot decide on one thing. And it could be that there are a thousand different opportunities, every single one of which would work for them. However, because they cannot focus and they're not uh, and they, they only put a tiny little time, bit of time into each one of them, they are not going to be successful at any of them because they are unable to decide. Next one is trust in authority. This one is something that's really big, but thankfully it's getting better. Most people seem to be under the impression that all of the official institutions, whether those are the government or, or public school or the media or public health institutions, most people think that these institutions are good and are working in their best interest. So let me tell you as directly as I can, if you believe this, it is going to absolutely destroy your life. The unfortunate truth of the matter is that we live in a fallen world and people who like power, people who like control, psychopaths essentially, have taken over these institutions for their own gain, or in many cases created these institutions in the first place. So if you believe that these people are telling you the truth and you believe that they have your best interests in mind and you just follow blindly what they tell you to do, then you're going to end up a very sad, a very poor, a very depressed, and a very unfulfilled person. There may be times when these institutions do actually give good advice or do actually tell the truth, but if you trust that that's the case all of the time, then you're gonna have very big problems. The next one is negative feelings towards other people. So that might be anger, might be hatred, might be resentment, might be jealousy. The more, the more you let these emotions fill your mind, the more they will waste your time, they will waste your energy, and they will waste your productivity. I can tell you this from personal experience. My life just completely shot off. Everything changed once I realized that I was letting anger basically run my life, that I was constantly getting angry at every little injustice in the world, and it did me absolutely no benefit. It just burned up all of my energy for nothing. And so when I realized that, and I stopped being angry, I still recognized all of the same injustices, uh, you know, which I talk about even a little bit in this video. I still recognize this stuff, but 
I don't get angry about it, at least not nearly as much as I used to in the past, and so now I can actually direct that energy towards something that's productive. Next one is cynicism, or skepticism of opportunities. I noticed this when, you know, I, I make these videos trying to tell people how to make their lives better, and I, I sell products with teaching people how to make their lives better, and there's always this certain contingent of people who just dismiss it without even listening. They say, oh, it's just a scam. You're trying to bilk people for their money. Uh, they're basically the, the basis of this belief, and I see this not just on me, but everybody who does this, anybody who's kind of in the self-development space or teaching people how to start businesses, that kind of thing, they always get these haters. And I, I think that what is at the basis of this is that they have uh, been programmed with this belief that nothing can ever get better, that legitimate opportunities do not exist, and anybody who is trying to tell them that they can make their lives better is, is just somebody trying to scam them. And so if you happen to have this mentality, and you know, you don't have to be radical about this. I think a lot of people have this mentality just a little bit, and it's good to be careful for sure, but if you just automatically dismiss everything that claims that it can make your life better, if you just dismiss it right away without listening to it, uh, well then you're gonna have a very bad time because you're going to just completely close yourself off from every potential opportunity. Next one is pride. Pride is a huge one because pride, one, it takes up a lot of your time and energy, and two, it makes it impossible for you to change your ways, right? I mean, I know this from experience because I was a very ego-driven person when I was younger. Everything I did just about, I did for the sake of pride. So for example, I would go to the gym five times a week in like two hours at a time, and uh, I was always, I was spending all my money on, on protein and supplements, and I was not healthy. You know, I was, I was getting bigger and bigger, and I was, I was proud of that. It made me feel good about myself when I looked in the mirror, but it was this massive expenditure of time that I could have been using for something more productive. I was spending a lot of money that I could have been doing something more productive, uh, and it, I wasn't really making myself healthier. It was just weightlifting all the time. I didn't do any cardio. Really, my, uh, I wasn't in shape in any holistic sense. And so I was, I was basically wasting all of my valuable resources for, for what? To be just a little bit bigger than the other guys in the gym. Like, that's really all it boiled down to. And by the way, I'm not saying that working out is bad. I still work out. It's just, what is the motivation? Is the motivation, uh, are you spending hours and hours and hours extra because of pride? Or are you doing a little bit of working out just to keep yourself healthy? There's a big difference between those two. And then the other thing is, too, with pride is that if... If you were prideful, then you can never admit that you're wrong, right? If you were someone who is very prideful, then probably you are never going to get any benefit from this, this video unless you recognize it and are willing to change it. Because if you have a lot of pride, you're never willing to admit your own faults. You're never willing to say, oh yes, I was wrong about this, and if I change my ways, then my life will get better. You're never willing to say, oh, I'm spending too much time doing this. Well, that was silly. Maybe I should do this instead. You're never going to be willing to do that because you always have to be right. When you have a lot of pride, you always have to be right. You're never, you're never willing to admit that you're wrong and so you can never change and therefore things can never get better. Next thing is lack of energy. If you look around, most people in society are, have very low energy all of the time. Most people are tired most of the time. And so if you don't have energy, then you can't do stuff, right? You can't really be productive. I think that's a big reason why so many people just spend their lives wasting away in front of the TV is because they, they don't really want to be doing that. It's just they don't really have the energy to do anything else. Next thing that holds people back is excuses. And this goes along with pride. People, are, people that have a lot of pride are not willing to admit that they have some sort of fault or that they've been doing something wrong that's holding them back. So instead of admitting it, admitting the actual problem, they come up with excuses. They blame it on somebody else or they blame it on society or they blame it on their parents or their upbringing. Uh, and so oftentimes these things are true. This is kind of the insidious thing with excuses is that there are always negative impacts all around you, and you can always blame those outside things if you want to, but 
you're never going to change those things. So it really doesn't help. If you will focus on the things that you can change, rather than focusing on all of the injustices that have been done to you, etc., then that's when you're going to actually be able to improve your situation. But if you focus on the excuses, then your things are never going to change. They're never going to get better. Next thing is negative expectations or low expectations. Now, as Myron Golden likes to say, expectation is our greatest superpower. Whatever we expect is what we tend to get. And this is especially true with our own performance. So if you try to start a business and you're just thinking about how your business is going to fail, well, chances are your business is going to fail. Or if you're trying to get in shape, or you're trying to lose weight, and you're thinking, oh, well, here's another exercise program that's probably going to fail. Well, if you're expecting failure, then you're probably going to fail. So if you have negative expectations or low expectations, those are going to absolutely shoot every effort that you ever do. Next one is bad relationships. If you have people who drag you down, if you have people who are constantly infecting you with negativity, if you have people in your life that are cutting down your dreams, then that's going to be a massive hindrance. And you know, th these might be your significant other, it might be your family, it might be your friends. Whoever it might be, the people around you always rub off on you to some extent. So if those people are rubbing off on you negatively, then you got to either fix the relationship or get rid of it. The next thing is obsessions and negative energy. Now, if you can get past that place where you only see the physical, you start to realize that the whole world is made of energy. And, and so you start to be a little bit more sensitive to the energy around you. And you notice that there, are, there is emotional energy that comes from unseen sources that, that may be intangible to you. So for example, if you've had the experience where you're just really irritated for no particular reason, this is something used to happen to me all the time. I would get really irritated at the tiniest little things. Uh, and, and I never even bothered to recognize that my irritation made no sense at all. Or if you're feeling good, and then all of a sudden you start feeling bad, you feel depressed or you feel anxious for no reason at all, apparently, well, you have to start to recognize that there are sources of energy around you that you might not understand yet. And when you can learn to recognize that those sources of energy that you don't understand are, however, affecting you, that's when you can start building your defenses against those things. Next thing is impatience. This is huge, again, in our world of, of constant stimulation and uh, instant gratification of, I order something on Amazon and it's, it better be there the next day. If you want to do something worthwhile with your life, chances are it's going to take some time. Chances are you're going to have to put months or years or even decades into it before it reaps a return. And so if you, if you don't have that patience, if you have that, that immediate gratification mindset where I have to get the result tomorrow, uh, then you're going to have a very difficult time. The next thing is poor organization. This is something that a lot of people struggle with because we just have so many opportunities and so many duties and so many sources of information coming at us all at the same time. And we have to be able to organize those or else we're just going to be in this constant state of indecisiveness. The next thing is information overload. We live in a society where for the first time really in human history, we have access to just about any information we could ever possibly want to learn. And so in order to be able to deal with all of that information, we have to have some kind of system of prioritizing it. And if you can't come up with that system of prioritizing and organizing information, then you're going to be in this state where you just have a, a gazillion useless facts in your head and no way to put them together into something that is actually actionable and something that's going to make your life better. The next thing is temptations in your environment. Every time you are tempted to do something that you know is going to harm some goal in your life, uh, you, are, you have to exercise willpower, which is a finite resource. You have to literally spend energy to not fall for the temptation. So every time you, you go to the grocery store and there's a whole bunch of candy bars staring you in the face while you're waiting in the checkout line, and then you go on, on the internet and there's all these, you're getting this spam telling you to look at this pornography. The more temptation there is in your environment, 
then the more likely you are to fall into it. And the less energy you have after resisting all the temptations, the less energy you have for doing the things that you ought to be doing. And our society is, is built in such a way as that we are constantly bombarded with temptations. So uh, our, the thing that we can do is to the best of our ability, remove the temptations from our environment, the control that we do have, the control we have over our own, f our own homes and our, our own web browsing and our, our own environment. We get rid of as much of that temptation as you possibly can. Next thing is lack of resourcefulness. Look, we have every resource we could possibly want to do just about anything we could possibly want. The, the challenge is to recognize those resources and put them in their proper place. So if you're unable to do that, then you're gonna have a pretty hard time. Next thing is taxes. The more money you have to pay in taxes, the less money you have to invest, the less money that you can put towards your goals. And then the next one, by the same token, is living expenses. The, the bigger the house you buy, uh, the more stuff you buy, the more you have to pay on a monthly basis then the, the more stuck you are going to be financially, the more dependent you are going to be on whatever your source of income is, the less able you are going to be to take on financial risk. Next thing is lack of creativity. Uh, a lot of people are, are very uncreative, and I think this goes back to negative emotions. If you're constantly in anger and constantly in anxiety and constantly in fear, then that creativity is, is suppressed, and you're never going to come up with new ideas, and you're never going to come up with that idea for a business or that idea for promotion or that idea for a new piece of art. At its very core, success comes from ideas, and if you're unable to come up with those ideas, then you're unable to reach success. Next thing is lack of critical thinking. This is something that I believe is, is very strongly baked into our society and baked into our education system because people who like to control do not like people who are able to think critically. If you talk to most people, the things they believe are the things that they are parroting from some other source that they have been told is, is a source that is credible. And most of the time, if you ask those same people why they believe that that source is telling them the truth, they will have absolutely no answer for you. We are raised in an education system where the teacher says, this is the right answer, and then if you repeat that answer to them, you get rewarded for it. There is no critical thinking involved whatsoever. But if you do not have the ability to question the things that you are being told by the official sources or by anyone for that matter, then you're going to have a very difficult time determining what are the real opportunities versus what are the false ones. What are the road to success versus the road to failure. You're just not going to be able to figure that out. You're going to be completely at the mercy of whoever you happen to be listening to. Next thing is negative programming. This is another thing that's baked into our society at a very deep level. We're taught that being rich is evil and then to, to make money is greedy and selfish, right? We're taught that being smart is a bad thing. You know, I remember when I was, when I was in sixth grade, um, I, got, I, I got very good grades in the class and kids picked on me because they called me I was the smart kid. They picked on me for that, like, like that was something to be ridiculed. And I don't blame these kids, you know, they're, they're sixth graders, they don't really think very much, but it's, it's interesting to me, looking back on this, that society had programmed these kids to believe that being smart was something worthy of ridicule. And the same people say that being rich is something bad, being religious is something bad. It's society's standards are completely backwards. We're being pushed more and more to believe that everything that's good is bad and everything that's bad is good. In the influence centers of society, the education system, uh, the news, Hollywood, TV, they are all, they work both consciously and subconsciously. They tell us this stuff outright and they demonstrate it uh, through their dramas, through their movies, through their TV shows. So they bake it into our subconscious mind so that we believe it consciously and subconsciously. And even if we recognize that it's a lie on a conscious level, it still affects us subconsciously and we still act as though it's true. So this negative societal programming is a huge factor for why most people live lives of quiet desperation and never achieve any kind of success or anything they can be proud of. Next one is lack of intelligence. If you are unable to think very deeply, then the possibilities 
to you are, are very much closed off compared to what they could be. And we're told that intelligence is something innate. It's something that we inherit from our parents and there's nothing that we can do about it. Which brings me to the very last thing I want to go over, which is a uh, deterministic worldview, that we believe that we're sick because of genetics. We believe that we're stupid because we were born that way. We believe that everything is, uh, there's no ch way to change it. It's, it's all just fatalistic. It's all given to us. It's all, it's all God's fault. None of it's ours, right? The, the more we can break out of that, the more we can recognize that we have a lot of power to influence our own situation, the better we're gonna do. But if we're stuck in that deterministic mindset, that's gonna make things very difficult. So that's all of them. Now, I would really, really appreciate it if you could write down in the comments some of the ones that are, that are big struggles for you because I'm gonna use this video in the future to figure out what to do my new videos on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the things that people are struggling with and I'm going to make videos to show you how to deal with those things. So let me know that in the comments, and then I also I highly recommend that you make a list for yourself. Make a list of all the things that you need help with, but don't frame it in the negative. Don't frame the problems. Frame what you would like to have. For example, if you've noticed that you have a lack of energy, say, uh, I'm going to have unlimited energy. Frame it in the positive. Frame it in the way that you would like it to be instead of the way that it is now. And then make a point to go through every single one of those things, and I will try to support you with this as much as possible. Go through every one of those things and do everything you can to fix that, to turn it from what it is now to what you would like it to be. And I guarantee you will see massive dividends in your life as a result. So that's all. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up because it makes YouTube like me better. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. Leave me a comment if you liked it. Share this video with somebody else who needs to hear it. And if you like this video, I think you'd also really enjoy this one as well.